Some verses in the Bible don't always make sense to us, um, but they carry vital truths that God reveals to us, and we're going to look at one of those today. Hi, and welcome to Encourage and Word, a brief daily word of encouragement from the Bible. I'm Dave. I'm in wonderful little snowy Killarney, Manitoba. Flakes are falling, big white flakes of snow falling. It's a winter wonderland out there, and uh, I trust wherever you are, you're having a good day today. You know, one of the main themes of Christmas is joy. Uh, the angel said that they were bringing good news of great joy, which would be for all the people. The Bible says that the wise men, when they saw the star again, after having stopped in Jerusalem, it says that when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They were filled with a great joy. But there's a verse in the Bible that uh, we often refer to and even sing about in churches sometimes, but it always causes me to wonder just a little bit. Maybe it does you too. It's found in the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 10. Now, Nehemiah was a Jewish man who was taken from his home to live in exile, to live as a slave in Babylon. He was living there uh, as a prisoner. Uh, he was forced to learn a new language, live in a new country. Uh, he was a contemporary of Daniel. Um, he was forced to eat new food, forced to, to, to learn new ways of living. And um, his job was to be cupbearer to the king. I don't know what he did back in uh, Israel, but here in Babylon, he was a servant. He was a butler. Uh, he was the cupbearer to the king. I'm going to make a long story short, but Nehemiah hears about the terrible conditions back home in, in Israel. It's 70 years after uh, the, the land has been destroyed and overcome. Cities are destroyed. There's no crops. People are living in destitute conditions. And he's incredibly sad. So sad, in fact, that his face shows his sadness, shows how upset he is. And so uh, when the king asks him, why are you so upset? What's what's bothering you? Uh, Nehemiah explains what's going on back in his homeland. And the king does something incredible, remarkable. He decides to send Nehemiah back to Israel, back to his homeland, with the intention of rebuilding the city of Jerusalem and getting the process of rebuilding the nation all going again. You know, again, I'm, I'm shortening the story. You, you have to know that. But after 70 years of exile, Nehemiah leads these people back to rebuild the city walls and to rebuild the city all over again. You know, on a day of celebration, after the walls are completed and, and the things have started, the whole rebuilding process has begun, uh, they have a, a day of celebration and Nehemiah asks a priest to read the Old Testament law, to read the scriptures. And it says there, uh, at the end of the reading of the scriptures, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the line we often sing about. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And it's, it's a difficult passage. <laughs> this is after the worst possible things that could have happened to these people and to a nation. Joy does not come because you have no troubles or trials. In fact, joy is what gets you through troubles and trials and through the difficulties you're facing. Joy is knowing that God is in control. You may not understand why certain things happen in your life, but joy is knowing that God's in control. God's got this. And uh, while it may be difficult for a season, God has a time of turnaround coming for you. And you and I need to find our strength in the Lord. Our joy can only be found in Him. You know, the priests repeat the line that Nehemiah says. They tell the people, do not grieve on this day. This is a day of celebration. And so we read in verse 12 of that chapter, Nehemiah 8, then all the people went away to eat and drink and to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. They had great joy because they now understood what the word of God was saying to them. I trust that you understand the real meaning of Christmas. I know many of you do. And I trust that it will be great joy again for you this season. It'll be good news of great joy for all people. God has come into our world and we can have wonderful joy on account of that. Whatever's happening in your life right now, I trust that you can understand the joy of the Lord 
will be your strength. And you need to hold on to that promise. And that's my prayer for you today. Would you bow with me? Father, thank you so much that we can know the joy of the Lord. We don't always understand why circumstances happen, why situations happen in our lives. But God, we're going to put our trust in you. We're going to hold on to you, knowing that you're in control, knowing that everything that happens to us has passed your desk and passed your uh, office. And so, Father, we pray today, oh God, that people would know the joy of the Lord and their strength. God, you're in control. You have your hand in every situation in every life. And we give you thanks for that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to watch. God willing, I'll be back tomorrow with another word of encouragement. Have a great day. God bless.